Let's show our appreciation to Jeff Yoder. I don't know where that prelude was taken to me, but it was a sweet spot going way back, so thank you so much. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to our folks online. Uh, this is a first for us uh, because we are having a live stream online service right now. Uh, but we are also doing it again with a different service at 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock, uh, we have uh, many of our youth being confirmed. I think it's 11? 10? 10. 10. 10. Uh, anybody wants to re-up, this is your time. We have a space available. I'm going to invite you to open this up uh, and have this. If you, you, if you probably don't have one, you're sitting close to somebody who does. It wasn't in every bulletin. Um, but anyway, uh, this is just the fun things. Pastor Kristen is going to include uh, quotes from our young people during the sermon. And, and when she says their name, if you want to know who they are, you can look right here. Uh, so we look forward to doing that uh, and it will help you connect with the service. The office is working hard to make sure that all our data to contacting you is up to date. Uh, we keep kind of two levels of records. One is uh, for publishing a directory, and that's the public data, but also we keep data that you want to keep private but allows us to contact you. Uh, so to do that in the bulletin, you'll see uh, where it says spring cleaning. We're trying to clean up the records. Uh, so we ask you to, uh, to, if you haven't done this already, we just need one person uh, from your household, one person. If you have more than one person, they have to do the dishes if you do this. So that's the way it works. Um, we are having our blood drive that's coming up. It's still time to sign up for that. And I'm told 
If you, if you sign up for this, you get the ultimate big cookie. The ultimate big cookie from Pizza Hut. Uh, and you have a chance to win a Volkswagen vehicle. I don't know what type it is, uh, but you can look forward to that. Can I ask all of our walkers and runners from yesterday from our 6K, please stand up. You can sit down. You can, I know you're tired. Sit down. Um, <laughs> these folks, uh, along with others from our congregation, raised over $5,000, which means, <laughs> which means that we provide wells that will provide clean water for 100 people. So that was a pretty good Saturday. So, uh, after this service. Uh, Many of you remember our beloved Max Volman, Max and his wife, Elsie, uh, and uh, we lost him this last year, uh, but his memories of him are still sweet. Uh, and so uh, there was a decision by the family uh, to redo our gardens, which if you remember, the pandemic was not kind to our plants. It took out the big uh, Palos Verde and stuff like that. And so uh, we have new, if you probably noticed some new plants in three spots around the church, we're gonna have a little dedication right over here uh, uh, after the service. So it'll be about uh, 10, 15, join us down there by the Whirly Gig uh, and we'll say some prayers and remember uh, a sweet couple uh, and their gift being to us as a congregation. Uh, but I have one more thing, let me get my microphone ready. Um, there is uh, a couple that I want to invite forward, or at least a man, and I'll ask his wife to escort him forward, um, a Mr. J. Rhodes. Is there a, a Mr. J? There's a J. Rhodes. Would you please come on down? Evelyn, you make sure that he doesn't run away. Jay, you are a one millionth customer. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many of you here, uh, Jay, you stand right here by me. All right. How many of you here have ever on a Sunday morning eaten a donut? <laughs> turn around, turn around. <laughs> All right. Uh, for eight years. Uh, Jay has gone way too early in the morning while his pastor was still in bed uh, uh, and picked up our donuts uh, and brought them here. And we have a few things to commemorate those eight years of service. And we have a little uh, award of excellence uh, for him. And as you can tell, Jay eats a ton of donuts. That's why he's so overweight. Uh, and uh, we have here a, a, a special uh, little keepsake donut. All right. You know, uh, this this is a little bit more on the, a little bit more on the serious side. There's so many times where uh, we have a visitor at the church, and I want to find them and make sure to welcome them. And I find them up in the fellowship hall, usually sitting at a table with one of you. Uh, and I'm reminded of the great words of Jesus Christ. I was hungry and you fed me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Uh, so this is, this is for Jay. Uh, turn it around so everybody can see. It says, I was hungry and you fed me. Uh, and Evelyn, I know you were in the truck as well. So we have a shirt for you. As, turn around. This one, you got pretty colors on yours. All right, let's give it up for Jay and Evelyn Rhodes. I don't know, but I think the service just peaked a little early. <laughs> Seriously, boy, what a great thing, what a great gift to welcome so many people to our doors. Uh, there's going to be a lot of blessings to count in heaven. Why don't we uh, stand up and we'll begin with uh, Psalm 67.
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And let God's people sing. Hymn 555, we'll sing to God above. We'll sing verse 1 and 2, the English verses. be with you. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food for your tree of life. Nourish us with your gifts, that you might bless your spirit. We may love one another and the world. Please be seated. A reading from Revelation, chapter 21. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and the lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. 
On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. We'll join in hymn 173. Please rise. According to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this point, I would like any children and youth who would like to, to come on up here for our children's sermon slash youth sermon slash mission, middle school minute, mission minute, middle school minute. That's what we were calling it, right? Come on up. You know what? I'm going to get this mic, too, in case you have something to say that everyone needs to hear. How about that? The big book, the big mic. How's everybody doing today? Are we on summer vacation? Yeah? No? A couple of you still have a little bit of school left? Okay. All right. Well, this is a little talk that I have given before, um, but it's one of the things that really confuses a lot of people. Um, in church, including some big people. So I thought it'd be worth talking about again. We're going to talk about how one plus one plus one equals one. What? What? We're going to talk about how God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and still one God. Now, is that, is that confusing a little bit? Uh, it makes more sense when you put it like that. Say it again. It makes more sense when you put it like that. It makes more sense when I put it like that than when I try to make it a math equation. Yeah, <laughs> good. We're going to talk about it because today, in our story from today, is when Jesus is telling his disciples, I have to say goodbye. 
I'm going away. Um, I'm, I'm going to be going back to be with God the Father. But, you, but I'm still going to be with you in a very special way because the Holy Spirit is coming as God's gift to you. God's going to send you the Holy Spirit, which will be God's presence with you, and you won't be able to see uh, the Holy Spirit the same way you were used to seeing me. But the Holy Spirit's going to come and live inside your heart. And so you will always, always have God with you. Now, do you think that where the Holy Spirit is, that Jesus is too? You do? Good. You're advanced then. Do you think that where the Holy Spirit is, God the Father is, is too? Yes. Yes. Do you think that where God the Father is, Jesus is too? Mm, yeah. yeah, the answer is yes, because here's an example. Like, I'll tell you, tell you a story. Like I, yesterday, went to do the 6K. You were there, right? We did the global 6K together, right? We walked. So I was there as a member of Team World Vision. So were you, right? We were part of Team World Vision. I have that orange shirt on underneath here. See? See? <laughs> I was there as a member of Team World Vision. I was there with my two boys, so I was also there as a mom. And uh, Kristen, the other Kristen over there, asked me to say a prayer at the beginning. So I was also there as Pastor Kristen. Now, so do you think when I was saying the prayer that I was, I was not a mom anymore? Did I stop being a mom? No, to put on my pastor persona. I just kind of forgot about my kids. And, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, do you think when I was walking and I was, you know, doing, doing the walk, did I just stop being a pastor? No, I didn't. I, I brought all of those things with me because I was all of those things at once. And I bet there are things um, that you are all at once, too. Uh, how many of you are students? How many of you go to school? Maybe not right now. Some of you are all done. But, Yeah. And how many of you are sons or daughters? All of you, that's amazing. Um, and how many of you are friends of, to somebody? Yeah. Can you be all of those things at once? Yeah, yeah. Now sometimes you might think about one a little bit more than another, right? Like sometimes you might be really concentrating on being a friend and that's the most important thing you can be in that, in that moment. Or sometimes you're really working hard at being a student, and that's really what, you're, what, what is most important in that moment. But you don't stop being those other things, do you? Right. So when, when God comes to us as the Holy Spirit, God doesn't stop being God the Father, right? Right? And God doesn't stop being Jesus, right? They're all with us all the time. And it's, it's because of the Holy Spirit living inside of us that we get to have him with us one, all the time. So... One plus one plus one equals one. one. You got it. New math. New math for today. Thank you for being such good listeners. I think we should say a prayer together. Don't you? All right, let's do that. You can repeat after me if you'd like. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are three and you are one. Thank you for your promise that you are always with us. Amen. All right, my friends, go back to your seats. Thank you so much for listening. Okay. Well, this passage comes from a section in John's Gospel known as the Farewell Discourse. It's the last time they will sit together around this table. The last lessons, the last supper, the last prayers that they will share, their last chance to ask questions while he sits there in their midst. Jesus' earthly ministry is ours from its end, and there is so much the disciples still don't understand. 
Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Lord, where are you going? Lord, why can I not follow you now? How can we know the way? They wish he would splash them all over and make them clean for good. They wish he would show them God the Father, that their thirst might be satisfied. They wish for courage that they don't quite possess. All before he goes. What he promises won't resolve all their questions or dissolve all their doubts, but it will instill in them a holistic sense of peace to ground them, a comforting presence to encourage and intercede for them, a love that will make its home in their hearts. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This name for the Holy Spirit can also be translated helper, counselor, or comforter. And my favorite Spanish translation renders it abogado, which is the same word for attorney. I love that. I love that. I feel like if, I, if things get out of hand here, like the Holy Spirit is just going to usher me off, you know, like attorneys do at press conferences. Like, my client has nothing further to say. <laughs> <laughs> this Holy Spirit wears a lot of hats, but the root word here is paraclete, and it means one who walks alongside. That's literally what it means, one who walks alongside forever, forever, Jesus says, no matter what. While Jesus goes, think about this, while Jesus goes to prepare the dwelling places for those he loves in the Father's house, he also comes in the form of the Holy Spirit to make his dwelling within them. So the eternal life of dwelling with God begins now, in this moment. A couple thousand years later, we will pray today at 11 o'clock that that same Holy Spirit will be stirred up in the 10 young people who make public affirmation of baptism. We don't anticipate that they will never have anxiety or doubt, that they'll never screw up, that they won't have any more questions. And yet we humbly trust and pray that that same Holy Spirit that has been stirring in this community since its inception, that has been walking alongside each of us since our first steps in faith, will continue to do the same for them. And this is something that many of them have already begun to experience and can, and can articulate. And so as Pastor Dan mentioned throughout this message today, this is really a uh, a compilation. You'll be hearing some excerpts from the faith papers that these students have written at the culmination of their confirmation experience. And the first I want to share is from Alexis Jones. She writes, I understand that God goes by many names because he wants to remind us that he has been through our same hardships and will always be there when we ask, even if it doesn't feel like it. That's about as clear a description there is of how the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is present as the one who walks alongside us. Jaden Hoffman describes how that presence is also inside of us, listening to and lifting up our prayers. God, she writes, is the most open-eared, tender-hearted soul anyone could ever come across. God also has a place in everyone's heart. His open ears accept every word that comes out of each mouth. It could be hatred built up with another person or simply going on about your day. And although he might not answer each and every prayer, he still listens to even the whispers among the meek. Every prayer, every prayer, even the lament, the accusation, even the mundane muddling through daily existence finds its way to God's ears through the Holy Spirit's intercession. Our passage today, however, highlights two roles of the Holy Spirit in particular. Jesus tells them that the, the Holy Spirit will, will teach the disciples everything and remind them of what he has said to them. And that feels really important to me. The Holy Spirit will keep calling to mind everything that they have learned from him in the past, but will also continue to teach them things they don't already know. 
because they don't know everything they need to know. And at this point, they don't even know what they don't know. My friends, we wouldn't need to pray for the Holy Spirit to stir in the newly confirmed, that spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and knowledge and all of that, if we thought that those students already knew everything they needed to know about the life of faith. And so that is why we call upon them to continue living among God's faithful people, hearing the word of God, sharing in the Lord's Supper, to keep showing up so that the Holy Spirit can use these living vessels to continue to teach. I was lamenting to confirmand Brian Weaver about how sometimes the rite of confirmation gets treated like a graduation. That, and that maybe the way we've structured it is misleading as a series of classes and that it gives the impression that faith formation is something you're supposed to finish or complete rather than something that widens and deepens. But Brian wisely responded that if the rite of confirmation is a graduation of sorts, it's only as an entree into higher education. I love that. So just as the disciples are coming to the end of their schooling under Rabbi Jesus, they are being ushered into an advanced course of study under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. And that's true for all of us. Whether you think of it as trade school for fishers of men or a bachelor's of discipleship, we have all entered the halls of higher learning, my friends. Brian wrote this in his faith paper. God is called the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit because he exists in all of us and he was present in Jesus. He is also the light at the end of the path while still being the creator of everything. The path continues with the triune God as both the light at the end of the path for which we strive and the one who is still creating, still doing a new thing along the way. So don't stop. Don't miss it. Because if we thought, if we thought we knew everything we need to know about the life of faith, we wouldn't be asking for God's help and guidance as we seek to support and pray for the young people in our congregation. And that's a part of the rite of confirmation, too. And if we're serious about that, then we want to be a community that models itself on the very nature and activity of the one who called us into being, this triune God. Listen to what Maren Taylor says about how the triune nature of God informs who we are as church. She writes, as, as a part of worship, we also recognize the Holy Trinity. To Lutherans, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are united and worshiped as such. This teaches that even God exists in a community and represents that Lutherans should be united with their church and peers included in the same religion. Do you hear that? Even God exists in community. So the way that we exist in community should reflect the unity that is in God's self. And the activity of the Holy Spirit who abides with and walks alongside us ought to be reflected in the way we walk alongside one another. Sullivan Gillis says this very well. She says, I believe that the church is a community designed to give us people to trust and find trust in. I believe that the church is a representation of God's support and his way of giving us guidance. The church is filled with people like us who want to know God to the fullest that they can. The church is not a place or a small group of people, but everyone who believes like we do. I want to be a part of that church that Solomon describes, that gives us people to trust and find trust in, that's not confined to a place, but consists of a people who want to know God to the fullest that they can. And if the higher education metaphor didn't work for you, here's one from Adam Thone that might resonate. I believe church is a little like football camp. Everyone has something in common at the camp. They like football. Part of the fun is going, in going is to be around people with similar interests. However, there are serious things you need to learn to become a better player. Receiving communion, 
Receiving forgiveness, listening to a pastor's message or a passage from the Bible helps make you a better player in the game of life. And that is exactly the kind of church that the Spirit creates. A church guided by the one who walks alongside can't stay within walls. It is training for the life of faith. Which is why our confirmands gather today to express their covenant to continue proclaiming the good news through word and deed, serving all people, and striving for justice and peace in all the earth. And we as a congregation gather to affirm that together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Caleb Levine gets it. Here's what he writes. I believe that the church is not only a place of worship and community, but it is the people that go there that are the church. We are a church for each other and the rest of the world. I plan to continue to live as a member of the body of Christ by being God's hands and feet like we are told to do while helping in ways that I can. So that's a good reminder to all of us that when, when you need someone to partner with you in being God's hands and feet in a, in, a, in a project, in a task, in a role that needs filled here at church, don't forget, don't throw away that insert. Don't forget to call upon your newly confirmed members. Don't assume you have to always call the same people that have always done the job. Don't underestimate how your walking alongside might mobilize someone else in service to others. Keaton Berg shares how that happened for him. My immediate family and grandparents have helped me to know Jesus Christ. This has happened by going to church on Sundays, attending Sunday school and confirmation classes, and volunteering and giving back to those in need. They have taught me you have to go in with an open mind help other people. I know that confirmation is not the only milestone uh, going on this week. I know there are eighth grade promotions, and there are high school graduations, and there are uh, kindergarten promotions, and there are any number of milestones that families are walking through at this time. And I want to remind you, all of you, don't underestimate the role that you have had and continue to have as faith shapers. Don't underestimate that role. I hope that you can feel how deeply your support, your encouragement, and your modeling in the life of faith is the key to making it stick. Still, whether the kids are promoting from kindergarten or high school or somewhere in between, you don't have to be perfect at it. They already know that you're not. <laughs> but let them see you strive and continue to set the expectation that this is what family life is built around. And one day, perhaps, you'll hear a note of grace like this one from Kai Taylor. God has provided me with an amazing family that loves and takes care of me. God expects me to treat everyone well and the same. He also expects me to give everyone a chance, even if he has done bad because everyone makes mistakes. Know that our prayers are with and for all of our families who are in this season of milestone, of farewells to one chapter and adjustment to another. And we trust that all those spirit-led steps that you have taken will continue to serve as landmarks for those who come along after you as have the steps that Natalie took alongside her younger brother, Ivan Stahl. Here's what Ivan wrote. Natalie has helped me know Jesus Christ. When she went to Sunday school, we used to talk about what we learned that Sunday. We always read a little part of the Bible every night. She always liked talking about Jesus and how he died for our sins. She always taught me new things that she learned about him. Before she left for college, she told me, I know that we will be over 100 miles away from each other. I won't always be there when you need me, but Jesus Christ is next to you, and he will always be next to you no matter what.
That made me trust God and his son, Jesus Christ, even more. Jesus said, I have said these things while I am still with you. But the advocate, the one who walks alongside, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. God go with you as you take your next steps forward in faith. Amen. Join in hymn number 397. Please rise. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. People of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. Hear us, O God. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace, 
especially refugees and people living in areas of violent conflict. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. We praise you for the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. May all who are ill or injured in body, mind, or spirit feel the nearness of the one who walks alongside. Bless Cliff Schneider, Bill Johnson, Ron Schultz, Zach Baker, Tim Bishop, Joyce Tesdall, Marita Fink, Shirley Baltuch, George Humphrey, Johnny Edwards, Don Noller, Johnny, and Kristen Rasmussen. Hear us, O God. We thank you for the life-giving gift of clean water. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts, where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather with us those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. Hear us, O God. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share God's peace. As our worship continues their offering, I want to thank all of you for all the ways uh, that you make the ministry around us happen. Thank you for your generous giving.
Please stand. Join in hymn 814. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Please be seated. 
We, of course, want to invite everyone who is in this room uh, to join us today for Holy Communion, but we also want to invite those of you who are doing this online, uh, whether you are sitting intently at a table or maybe you were doing dishes during Pastor Christian's sermon. Uh, <laughs> now is the time uh, for you to slow down, uh, to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even from your very home. So let us take in the forgiveness of Christ given to us. We'll join in Lamb of God as printed in the bulletin.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of life who raised from Jesus from the dead, who sends forth the Spirit to renew the face of the earth, be merciful to you and bless you now and forever. Good news. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.